Good day everyone, I am Mary Glenn Butoy and my topic is about problem-centered design. So do you know what is problem-centered design? Generally, problem-centered design draws on social problems, needs, interests, and abilities of learners. Various problems are given emphasis. These are those that center life situation, contemporary problems of areas living and many others. In this curriculum, content cuts across subject boundaries and must be based on the needs, concerns, abilities of the students. So, there are two examples of problem-centered design. Number one, life situation design and core problem design. That is the number two. So, let's tackle about life situation design. Life situation design is what makes the design unique and that content are originized ways allow students to view clearly problem and areas. It is used the past and the present experiences of the learning as the mean to analyze the basic areas of living. As a starting point, the pressing immediate to be problem of the society and the students' existing concerns and utilized. Based on Herbert Spencer's curriculum writing, his emphasis were activities than sustained life, enhanced life, aid rearing children, maintain the individuals, social and political relations and enhance leisure tasks and feelings the connection of the subject matters to real situation increase relevance of the curriculum and uh, number two is the core problem design Core problem design is another example of problem centered design or core design it centers on general education and the problem are based on the common human activities the central focus of the core design includes common needs, problems and concerns of the learners, popularized by Fons and Bossing of 1959. It presented ways on how to proceed using core design of a curriculum. So now, I would like to discuss, there are the steps how to use the common uh, problem curriculum. So, step one, make group conscious on important problems. Step two, develop criteria for section of important problem. Step 3. State and define the problem. Step 4. Decide on areas of study including class grouping. Step 5. List the needs information of resources. Step 6. Obtain and organize the information. Step 7. Analyze and interpret the information. Step 8. State and tentative conclusion. Step 9. Present a report to the class, including by the group. Step 10. Evaluate the conclusions. And the last one, step 11. Explore the other answers for forwarding further problem solving. So that's all about from our topic and thank you for listening. So this is a continuation of problem-centered design, the approaches to curriculum design which includes the child or learner-centered approaches and subject-centered approaches. Child or learner-centered approaches, it is about shifting the focus of instructions from the instructor to the learning. It means that the child must be the centered of the educational process. It should be the learner, not the teacher, not even the subject. So there are some principles of child or learner-centered approaches. The first one is acknowledge and respect the fundamental rights of the child. So meaning, teacher must give more attention to students like respecting their freedom to speak, their perspective, their point of views, and also their concerns. The second one is make all activities revolve around the overall development of the learner. It means focuses on the students where you can see their improvement and cap capacity in learning. The third one is consider the uniqueness of every learner in a multicultural classroom. So when we say multicultural classroom, you may or you must consider the quality of being one of a kind learner like accepting their different kinds of beliefs and religion and embracing their flaws. In short, no to discrimination. And the fourth one is consider using differential instruction or teaching. So as a teacher, you may use alternative objectives in teaching. Then the last one principle is provide a motivating, supportive learning environment for the entire learner. 
As a teacher, you should encourage students to study well, to achieve their goals in life, and to be one of a successful professional in the future. So there are some advantages of the child or learner-centered approaches. The first one is improves participation, improves retention of knowledge, boosts performance at work, develop problem-solving skills, fosters collaborative learning, and makes learning more fun and facilities personalized learning. Meaning, as a learner, show your confidence to improve your participation and to maintain your knowledge. To help yourself to perform or participate well, to flourish your skills in problem solving, enrich your learning, and make it the learning more fun. So let's proceed to disadvantages. It is an approach to learning with not as much structure or discipline as a traditional method, causing students to feel overwhelmed and maybe not pull as much as from learning as they normally would. So do not use te in teaching too much broad for students to learn. So now let's proceed to subject-centered approaches. Subject-centered approaches resolves around a particular subject matter or discipline. So when we say subject-centered, it should be subject, only focus on the subject. Principles of subject-centered curriculum approach, the first one is primary focus is a subject matter. So subject should be the primary focus on it. The second one is the emphasis on bits and pieces of information which may be detached from life. So it is connected to real life that will bring your learnings not just in the within the campus but outside the school. The third one is the subject matter serves as a means of identifying problems of living and the learning means accumulation of content or acknowledge. The fifth one is teacher's rule is to dispense the content. So meaning the subject serves as a tool then as a teacher you must gather and contribute the content or to give more information about the particular subject to the students so the advantages of the subject centered is it is possible and desirable to determine in advance what will children will learn in various subjects and grades or classes so it is possible to find out what might be the learnings of the students and easy to predict in the if the students learn from different kinds of subject. So here's the disadvantages: lack of integration and passive learning. Passive learning means students are less involved in the learning experience. Problem-centered approach. This approach is based on a design which assumes that in the process of living, children experience problem. Thus. Problem solving enables the learners to become increasingly able to achieve complete or total development as individuals. So, in curriculum designing, you must always consider that the learners may encounter problems, especially in their lives. So, this problem-centered approach gives a vehicle or way to achieve the goals and objectives that is identified in the curriculum. So here are some views and beliefs that characterize the problem-centered approach. First, the learners are capable of directing and guiding themselves in resolving problems, thus developing every learner to be independent. This means learners are intent to manage one's own learning and become independent to respond to the difficulties in life. Second, the learners are prepared to assume their civic responsibilities through direct participation and different activities. So since learners are well trained to solve real problems, they will be prepared to uh, participate, participate in different activities. And the third one, the curriculum leads the learners in the recognition of concerns and problems in seeking solutions. Learners are problem solvers themselves, and that makes them independent. So now let's talk about curriculum design tips. First, identify the needs of stakeholders early in the curriculum design process. This can be done 
through needs analysis, which involves the collection and analysis of data related to the learner. So when making a curriculum design, always identify the, uh, the needs and wants of your learner. And how will you do this? Of course, through a survey, you will conduct a survey so that you can, you can identify their needs and wants. And after, after identifying the needs and wants of your learners, this, uh, this is when you can create a list of learning and goals and outcomes. Learning goals and outcomes. So what is learning goals and outcomes? Learning goals are the things teachers want students to achieve in the course. It is uh, what a instructor and the institution aims to do for their learners. And learning outcomes are the measurable knowledge, skills, and attitude that students should have achieved in the course. An example of this is uh, the knowledge, uh, comprehensive, um, analysis, and etc. Next one, identify constraints that will impact the curriculum design. So, when you say constraints, barriers, mga hadlang. So, example of this is time. Time is a common, time is a common constraint that must consider. If there isn't enough time to deliver all the instruction that has been planned, it will impact learning outcomes. Exactly. This is right because uh, when the instruction is not well delivered, can you even uh, understand the activity that is given to you? Diba dili? So, dapat imuhag yung i- ano, i- identify gini mo ang mga hadlang sa mga sa pagbuhat ni mo o curriculum design. Next one, consider creating a curriculum map so that you can properly evaluate the sequence and coherence of instruction. The next one, identify the instructional methods that will be used throughout the course and consider how they will work with student learning styles. What are those examples of these uh, instructional methods? Here are some examples. Group discussion, role playing, self instruction, simulation, uh, lecture. So it's uh, it's either it's up to you what kind of instructional methods you are going to use for you uh, for you to be able the learners will be able to uh, learn. Next one, establish evaluation method that will be used at the end and during the school year. To assess learners, instructors, and the curriculum. The most effective evaluation is ongoing and summative. So this is where you can uh, you can see and allowed to see if the curriculum design you are uh, if the curriculum design is effective and have achieved your goals and objectives. So how will you do this? Uh, what kind of evaluation method you are going to use. Uh, example of this, test, um, midterm, final exam, and final, uh, final activities and output. So the last one, remember that curriculum design is not one step process. Continuously improvement is necessity. The design of the curriculum should be assessed periodically and refined based on assessment data. This may involve making alteration of the design part grade through the course to ensure that to ensure that learning outcomes or a certain level of proficiency will be achieved at the end of the course. So every uh, there is always an evaluation. Sa evaluation, dihan ni mo siya makita kung nabakay angay utrohon kung na-achieve ba nimo ang imuhang goals and objectives ko. So, if wala, ayaw pag-stick. Ayaw pag-stick. Dapat mo, ano ka, dapat imuha siya i-improve. I-improve nimo ang imuhang design. 